What's up guys, Okan here and I'm back at it with another video. Now, I know it's been a long time, I've been leaving you guys in the dust, however, I am back. I'm going to be making videos more consistently, but enough about that, let's just get into what I'm here to talk about, what you all want to hear about, and that is E3 2021. Christmas for gamers. Finally here, we finally made it. Now, this is the end of E3 right now that uh, I'm recording this. This is on Tuesday night. However, I did want to just go back and give you guys my thoughts on all four days, uh, including Summer Game Fest, so technically five days. But I just wanted to go through all the main conferences and give my uh, favorite reveals that we saw in the conferences, just so that you guys could get an idea of what I'm looking forward to the most. And hopefully in the comments down below, you guys can let me know what you're looking forward to the most. So without wasting any more time, let's just get right into it. And let's start with Summer Game Fest, because that was kind of the first show that really kicked off what E3 was this year. Now, my thoughts on Summer Game Fest as a whole were that it was it was OK, I think, like there were some decent announcements nothing that really spoke to me all that much besides uh these three games that i'm about to mention that interested me in some capacity now starting at the beginning we had tiny tina's wonderland and this is not a borderlands game it's a standalone game with a uh, spell casting and character customization and it sounds like a good place for me to start because i've never gotten into a borderlands game and tiny tina is a character who's uh from the borderlands games from what i understand however she's not it's not an official borderlands game it's something completely separate and they're gonna go a little bit more in depth with uh, this game in the upcoming days or upcoming weeks i can't remember when but i am looking forward to this one it did look interesting the trailer showed off a really stunning cast we got andy sandberg we got ashley birch we got will arnett um and i'm looking forward to it that for sure Next up, we got another look at a little game called Tunic, yes, pun intended, and Tunic has been uh, teased for a really long time. It was announced at E3, I believe, in like 2017 or so, and what it looks like to me is The Legend of Zelda, if, Zelda, or if Link was a fox, and it looks very interesting. Like, the gameplay here that you're seeing on the screen just looks really fun. And just going through these things and these dungeons looks interesting. Like, it really looks a lot like Zelda. Like, just by going through the dungeons and the monsters that attack you. And the um, the art style, in a way, kind of reminds me of Link's Awakening that released a couple years back. And actually, we're finally getting some news on it, which is that there's a playable demo which can be played on Xbox right now, which is really sick. And I'm looking forward to playing that. I'll get back to you guys with my thoughts on that. Probably within the next few days or so, but yeah. And uh, next we have... <sighs> Guys, we got it. We finally got it. Elden Ring. It's real. It's not a myth. It's not made up. Uh, From Software is coming through with this. And they did it during Summer Games Fest, which means they really believe in Jeff Keighley's vision, which was dope. So um, Miyazaki and George R.R. R. Martin came together for this game. And from what I understand is it is similar to the other Souls-like games. However, it is different in the way that it's open world and traversal is different because in this game, you actually get a horse to travel on instead of just walking around in your dusty ass boots. And it looks like it's going to be a doozy. And I'm kind of excited for this one because... Till this day, I've yet to play any of From Software's games because I'm a scared little bitch and they look too hard for me because I suck at video games. But I'm excited to check this one out. Uh, the monsters look dope. Your character looks dope. like look at those things. What is that? I don't even know. But it looks like it's going to be fun to try it out. And I really can't wait to get my hands on it when it comes out. I believe the release date is January 2021. Can't remember the exact date. But I know it's coming out. I'm tripping. January 21st, 2022. Because January 2021 already passed. I'm dumb. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. On to the next game. Next up, we got day one of E3 officially starting. Now, to kick this day off, we got the Ubisoft Forward event. This is where Ubisoft goes through and has a little showcase for all their games that are coming out and games that have already been announced, some new games, and some, like I said, that have already been announced. I think uh, day one was decent enough. 
Um, I didn't watch every showcase because I didn't exactly have time to. So I missed a lot of the indie showcases, but I want to jump into the Ubisoft Forward. So first up, what you're looking at is gameplay of Rainbow Six Extraction, which is a first person one to three player action survival game to my understanding. Now, um, from what I understand so far is that alien organisms have infiltrated the earth and you go on missions to take down the aliens, which I believe are called Archeons, Archeons, I can't remember how they pronounced it. And as you see, we're getting a look at some of the gameplay right here. It looks like stealth and teamwork is very important this time around, uh, which would make sense with this being a Rainbow Six game. I understand that's a big focus on those, especially in games like Siege. Never played Siege myself, except for one time, and I did not understand how to play at all because I'm an idiot. However, it did look like fun, and it looked like something that I do want to try out. And this game looks like something I want to try out as well, because instead of being PvP, which is never really my jam, this looks more PvE. Uh, and I like PvE games because I do like playing with people instead of playing against people. So I want to give this one a chance. They gave us eight minutes of gameplay and they kind of give us a little deep dive into things. And I appreciated that. Um, doesn't look too like it doesn't look too graphically insane. It looks decent enough, but I believe it's coming out on last gen consoles. Um, when I say last gen, I'm in PS4 and Xbox One because we are in the next gen. However, it's going to be interesting to see how this game plays out. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I can't remember what the release date is. I should have written the release dates down on these things. I'm kind of dumb for that. But I'll look it up and I'll let you guys know later. So yeah, on to the next game, which would be the Avatar game. Now, this one really sent me for a loop. So the title of this one is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and I believe the footage was in, sorry, I believe the footage was in engine, but uh, it wasn't exactly gameplay, and it looked cool for sure, but it's so random to have an Avatar game coming out right now. However, I'm still going to play it whenever I get a chance, and Ubisoft, I think, is a great developer for a game like this, especially with the prospect of being able to explore a planet like Pandora, because it's been years, probably a decade, since I've seen the Avatar film. However, I do remember the planet of Pandora being beautiful and gorgeous and just full of life and luscious, so making... If Ubisoft sticks to their formula and makes a great open world game based in this world, like just look at that. They could really have something nice on their hands. So I really want to see what they do with this and what direction they go in. And I know you're playing as a specific character and you have to fight against the military forces of the humans. Can't remember um, excuse me, what their military uh, name is. However, I am excited to get my hands on this one whenever it finally releases. And yeah, that was pretty much everything from the Ubisoft showcase. Yeah, I know it was only two games. Nothing really spoke to me from this one. They showed some stuff from Avenger, uh, not Avengers, I'm tripping. They showed some stuff from Assassin's Creed, uh, some DLC, but I wasn't a huge fan of Valhalla when it came out. And they showed a couple other games like Watch Dogs Legion and things like that. Some things for Division, but nothing really spoke to me on a major scale. So that was all I got for day one of E3. Now, on to day two. And day two was a banger. And you know why? Xbox and Bethesda. Xbox and Bethesda really, really came with their A game and showed off some amazing things. Now, starting with number one, they kicked the show off with Todd Howard coming out on stage as a big flex. And what did they open the show with? They opened it with none other than Starfield, what they knew we've all been salivating for. We just wanted it. And they gave it to us just out the bat like that. Now, what we know about Starfield so far is that it's set hundreds of years into the future and apparently has been 25 years in the making. We know it's going to be set in space, but not really much else about it other than the fact that it's essentially Skyrim and Fallout in space, which sounds amazing to me because Fallout, the Fallout series are some of my favorite games of all time. Never played an Elder Scrolls game. I've never put my hands on Skyrim because I'm scared of how many hours I could potentially put into that, but I'm definitely going to put a lot into Starfield whenever it comes out. And November 11th, 2022 is the release date, and the way that they revealed that was pretty dope. And bigger than anything else that they announced about this game is that it's going to be an Xbox exclusive. 
So that $1.5 billion deal that they struck with Bethesda wasn't for naught. They are making exclusives here. They're really flexing. They came here to get games. They have Bethesda's amazing library under their belt now. And now Xbox has just taken off into the stars, pun not intended. And they're really trying to get amazing games under their belt. Excuse me, really trying to just make power moves here with this next generation and i'm here for it 100 percent and if you guys don't know i started out basically just having an original xbox that was my first uh first game console and so xbox has kind of always been near and dear to my heart i have a ps5 right now and no xbox series x or s but that's just because it's been so hard to get my hands on one but i am looking forward to getting the xbox series whenever i get a chance and just picking this game up because I'm stoked for it 100%. Next up, we got a funky little trailer with some groovy music. And this game is coming from Avalanche Studios, who made the Just Cause games and Rage 2. Now, this is just a CGI trailer, and the title of the game is Contraband. But um, no idea what it is, but I'm interested if nothing else. And we also know that it'll be coming to Game Pass whenever it releases, which is huge because. Game Pass is just a hell of a deal. I hadn't had it for a couple of months because I hadn't really touched my Xbox in a couple of months, but I just got it back the other day because I just can't miss out on those savings and all the amazing games that they have on that lineup. So this game is coming to Game Pass. Not sure what it's about. Uh, in the trailer, I believe they say that it's a cooperative experience, an open world. Yeah, right here they say a co-op I believe open world experience yeah and I'm looking forward to trying it out I don't know what it is but maybe it's gonna involve a heist of some sort and things like that so whenever I get my hands on it I'll let you guys know not sure how far out that's gonna be but I am excited nonetheless next on the list we got to look at battlefield 2042 the new battlefield game from ea and i gotta say i am kind of looking forward to this one i'm a little i'm cautiously optimistic though because it is a multiplayer only game which i'm not super excited for about because i'm more of a single player kind of player and on top of that multiplayer only with a 70 dollars price tag on it that's a little scary in my opinion so i'm looking forward to it however i'm like i said cautiously optimistic the gameplay here does look fun the vehicles look fun the uh overall uh, game experience looks fun like look at this little grappling hook ap action right there whoop looks a little fun in my opinion it all looks fun and that's kind of all that matters and there's going to be some dynamic weather changes in this game like sandstorms giant tornadoes all that good stuff so we'll see exactly what dice does with this one uh, they kind of have a lot riding on it because i have to say battlefield hasn't really held a candle to the other multiplayer shooter games that have been out in these past few years like call of duty is still king with warzone fortnite is king apex is king so they've got a lot of catching up to do and the thing about all three of those games is they're all free to play so what does a 70 dollar multiplayer only game have that these games don't have that's what they're gonna have to prove it did look interesting though, so I did want to bring it up to you guys. But yeah, on to the next game, which is the big gun, Halo Infinite. Now, we got an in-engine trailer for the game and a look at some of the gameplay via another trailer. And I myself have played just a few Halo games and none of those included multiplayer. So I'm excited to give it a shot, especially since the multiplayer is going to be free to play. Uh, the game doesn't have an official release yet, but they did say holiday 2021, so that's what we got for now. Let's hope they make it in time, though, because there's a lot riding on this game for Xbox. I have to say, um, from what I understand, the past few Halo games haven't been too hot, and they haven't been what people want from Halo, and from, like, Halo Reach, Halo 3, the, the real tentpole original... Uh, authentic I can't find the word that I'm looking for so I'm replacing it with a bunch of other words uh, the staples in the series um, so they're trying to play catch up here with this because Master Chief is their mascot and when you have a mascot that mascot has to deliver so 
it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this new Halo game. All I know is that on both fronts, single player and multiplayer, they can't really fail. They kind of have to deliver big time. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go with this time around. But I'm here for it either way. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do holiday 2021 with this game. Next, we got what is probably, if not definitely, my favorite announcement out of all of E3 so far. We got The Outer Worlds 2. Let's go. Ooh, baby, baby. So, excited for this one. Now, The Outer Worlds 1 was a great game. I gave it a top score when I reviewed it. Uh, when it came out, I believe, was it last year? I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But the trailer was pretty funny and obviously didn't show off anything in terms of gameplay or in-engine stuff. It was just a cinematic trailer with a narrator who was making fun of the trailer as a whole the entire time. Which, like I said, was pretty uh, comedic and pretty funny. And I really liked it. But it is exciting to know that a sequel is in the works already. Because with microsoft getting bethesda and owning fallout and things like that you would think that they wouldn't be rushing to put out the outer worlds again however it looks like they got good feedback and good reception on the first game so it looks like the outer worlds 2 is on the radar and it's coming all right so i'm looking forward to it i'm super 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 excited can't wait to share my thoughts with you guys when the outer worlds 2 drops whenever that will be Following that, though, was another exciting one, uh, Forza Horizon 5. We got a slick little trailer from the new game and a quick little deep dive from the studio. And it looks like this one will be set in Mexico, which isn't what fans wanted. Fans have been wanting this game to be set in Japan so bad. You know, we all want a Tokyo Drift. However, it will come with time. I'm hopeful. But for now, we are in Mexico. And the Horizon games are very arcadey sports racing games. And I really enjoy them. And I know location really matters to the players of these games so hopefully this location gets the job done the game drops on november 9th so i'll be excited to play it when it comes out but from what we saw in this trailer it's very exciting the game looks gorgeous like insanely beautiful and i'm just ready to get my hands on it because these games are fun i like racing games i don't always complete them but they are fun to play at least for a little while they just get your mind off things and they're just a good time all together so november 9th that's when we'll get our hands on it so to end the show off microsoft uh they showed us a cinematic trailer for this game from arcane studios the people that made dishonored and it looks really cool the game is called redfall uh there seems to be some vampires in it from and some form of magic or some type of powers and some capacity like i can't really tell exactly what's going on here but it is said to be an open world game, I believe, with co-op in it. So, going to be looking forward to this one coming out. Like I said, this is only a cinematic trailer, but what they showed off looked really sick. And the game drops in 2022. We didn't get a official release date, but we did get the announcement that it will be coming to Game Pass. Like, 27 of the games in this showcase. There were 30 games shown, and 27 are coming straight to Game Pass. That's incredible. Now, there were a lot more games shown, like I said, but I'm just going through my top picks. And like I said, the Xbox Bethesda showcase was spectacular. Like, it gets an S rank for me, for sure. So, I am looking forward to all of these games that come out recently. And it's going to be exciting to see where they go in the future with these games and how they all do. But, moving on from that, staying on day two, we did get a little um <sighs> we got a showcase from square enix called square enix presents and i gotta say this one wasn't all that hot um first thing we did get though was pretty hot uh guardians of the galaxy game by idos montreal and i gotta say it was a big surprise it's been rumored but who knew we'd actually get it and we got to see some gameplay and it looks pretty cool I like the character designs as well. Uh, they obviously had to differentiate this from the MCU films characters and base the characters designs off of and based off the character designs alone. They did a pretty good job to me. So I'm excited about that. Um, 
we got a gameplay demo and it showed off that you get to slightly decide how the game will play out by selecting different dialogue options to choose from and they said that it'll have repercussions on the story in some way so i am looking forward to that without a doubt because i do love games where you get the choice even though i hate making the choice because i'm scared of what's going to happen in the future but uh we'll just have to wait and see how that goes now in terms of combat you do play as star lord and only star lord um, but it does look like you can input commands that let you control the other Guardians character movements. Kind of similar. Uh, this was described uh, by other people that I heard. And it makes sense. It's kind of similar to how uh, you play in God of War. Where you control Atreus by pressing a button and issuing commands to him. And playing like that I guess is okay. I believe um, this is a single player story driven third person action adventure game like I said where you play Star Lord and only Star Lord which is kind of a bummer to me when there's a whole cast that would have been interesting to play as that's something of a missed opportunity in my opinion but I guess they didn't want to make a half big game when they could have just focused on one character and let you input commands to play as the other characters in some capacity so I guess that is better than them just being completely passive to you and so what liabilities or something like that so it'll be nice but the game does come out on October 26 2021 very close surprisingly and I am looking forward to that 100% uh, next up we got a new look at the Avengers game from Square Enix and um, well it looks like more Avengers to me. This game, I've been playing since it came out. I wrote a review on it. Thought it was repetitious, but fun. I am kind of tired of fighting the same robots in this game. So with this new expansion called War for Wakanda coming out later this year, hopefully, uh, I'm expecting some new types of villains, new content, something new to keep us going. Because if not, this game could be the next anthem. It could be dead in the water. And I don't want to see that happen because I do enjoy playing this game for as repetitive and as kind of mundane that it can feel at times. So I'm looking forward to it. Maybe it's because it's a superhero game or something, but I'm hopeful that they can revitalize this game in some way because they desperately need it. And that's pretty much the end of day two of E3. Now, like I said, it was a decent showing. Uh, got some decent games here, but definitely better than day three, which I consider a snore fest. We really only got one uh, conference that day. We got, like I said, some indie showcases, but one big conference, and it was the Capcom showcase. Now, I have to be completely honest and say zero things interested me in this showcase like not not even in the slightest uh they started out with resident evil resident evil does nothing for me i've tried at least one of the games i maybe i need to try them all but like i said before i'm a little bitch i'm a crybaby and i'm scared of scary games so i don't really want to they don't really do anything for me so i don't really want to check them out uh, they did Monster Hunter stories too, and I'm a Monster Hunter fan. I'm a relatively new Monster Hunter fan, but I am a big Monster Hunter fan. And this game also does nothing for me, to be completely honest. It doesn't look like the type of gameplay that I want out of a Monster Hunter game, and so I'm probably going to skip it myself. Uh, they also showed some form of collab with Monster Hunter Rise, which I did enjoy. Um, so we're going to see two Monster Hunter games collab with one another, which I guess is interesting. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, nothing really new in terms of content for Monster Hunter Rise, in terms of like uh, story events or anything like that. So we'll just have to wait and see what they have in store for that because Monster Hunter Rise was a very good game to me. And I do want to see more from that. Um, they did a new Phoenix Wright game. Never played a Phoenix Wright game before, so that didn't appeal to me. Uh, like I said, this showcase wasn't really much for me. Um, I watched it and I tried to find something interesting in it, but it just didn't really hit in the way that I wanted it to. I was expecting like a new Marvel vs. Capcom or something like any three prediction that I had, you know, just wanted to see something crazy happen, uh, but they didn't have to have that to deliver. So it was a bit disappointing in my opinion. So on to the next day which is day four today as of the time i'm recording this 
the final day of E3, and we got a killer Nintendo Direct. Now, when I say killer, I don't necessarily mean for me, because Nintendo Directs are always kind of iffy for me, because I never really played Nintendo games growing up, so there's so much that I missed out on, and I've never even played a Mario game before in my, like, like really played one like i played mario kart but i don't really consider that as like a real mario game but there's a lot in these things that don't really speak to me because i've never had a chance to try them out so i guess now is my time but watching this first thing we got was a super smash bros ultimate new character reveal uh, we got kazuya from tekken now i don't play the tekken game so i can tell you how important this is to fans but it is always cool to see more fighters added to smash bros even though i haven't like updated my fighters since like the game first came out because i just don't really play fighting games like that i do like to play them but i'm not like good at them and i don't like keep up with them in that way but it was interesting to see a new character and one from tekken nonetheless was pretty cool so shout out to them for that following that we did get some uh interesting news a new well not new at all but the life is strange games uh three of them are coming to nintendo switch you got life is strange one uh, life is strange i believe before the storm and the newest one life is strange true colors coming to nintendo switch which is pretty sick uh, i did play the first life is strange game i tried a little bit of the second one wasn't really a huge fan of it um but the first one was pretty good and it was really fun to see where your consequence what the consequences of your actions would be in that game i do like the supernatural mystical elements to those games and um they're a good time in my opinion so uh i'm looking forward to playing the newest one i'm not sure what system i'll play it on but i am gonna play it for sure and i'm excited probably gonna try it on a switch we'll see if it makes the system chug or not but fingers crossed for that switch pro am i right but yeah uh, Life is Strange games coming to Switch. Pretty interesting news for sure. And a pretty big move for them. So shout out to them for that. Following that, we got news of a new Metroid game coming out. Now, I've never played a Metroid game before. Like I said, I haven't played a lot of Nintendo games. A lot of mainstream Nintendo games. So this kind of did nothing for me. But it's exciting for a lot of people. I was scrolling through Twitter as this was announced. And for people, it's crazy good news. Because apparently a, a 2D Metroid game hasn't come out since like 19 years or so. If I'm remembering that correctly. Which is insane. So for people, this is pretty big. And I'm excited for everybody else in that capacity. Like like I said, it did nothing for me. But this game does look fun. It looks like it kind of has kind of a uh, haunting element to it. Because it looks like you're being chased around. It's called uh, Metroid Dread. Which seems kind of scary. And the gameplay right here, as you're seeing, shows that you're being chased by some robot of some sorts. So I guess that's where the Dread element comes to it. And it seems interesting nonetheless. So uh, we'll see how this game does. Maybe I'll check it out because, like I said, never played a Metroid game before. So we'll see if this is the one for me when it officially hits shelves. I uh, can't remember what the release date of it is. But, like I said, I suck at that. But we'll see whenever it comes out. Uh, next up, and the final thing I'm going to talk about in regards to E3... We got a Legend of Zelda segment. Now, the segment included talking about Age of Calamity a little bit. Some DLC coming to that game. Uh, never played that game. Doesn't really do anything for me. But following that, we got some new information shared about Skyward Sword. But nothing of consequence. Uh, but I've never played Skyward Sword myself because I never had a Wii. So this game coming to Switch is exciting for me because I get the chance to try it out. I have heard a lot of people say this isn't one of their favorite Zelda games just because mainly because of the um, the clunky controls. But we'll try it out whenever it hits shelves. Uh, I believe next year. I mean next year. Next month actually. Uh, oh and there's the release date for Metroid. Um, but finally we ended this conference with... <sighs> the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 news. Now, well, not really news, I guess, but we got a quick gameplay overview trailer. Now, this game has been in development for a few years, um, and 
This looks very exciting to me. They showed off some new abilities and just how the game will look overall. Wasn't crazy long, but they did say it will be releasing in 2022. Even though they didn't sound too sure of that themselves, they sounded a little cautious about releasing that date. But we're hoping that it's going to hit that maybe early 2022, maybe late 2022. Apparently, the game is available for pre-order on Amazon already. And the release date is 2022, uh, December 31st, which is basically 2023. So we'll just have to wait and see if this game makes the release date that it's intended for. But yeah. Um, I'm excited for this one. I haven't beat the Breath of the Wild yet. I'm actually on the final castle, so I have to fight Ganon. That's my last thing to do in the game. Unless there's more to do in the game after that, I'm not sure. But I've collected everything else in the game, so I'm excited to beat that one and move on to the next one. But yeah, that's pretty much my E3 experience. I had a great time following all these, covering these things in my own way I can't really cover them because i don't work for anybody so if anybody wants to hire your boy let me know i'm down to work with you or work for you but yeah that's going to be my e3 2021 coverage for the year i was excited like i said christmas for gamers um let me know what you guys thought of this showcase in the comment section down below appreciate you guys watching as always and if you did enjoy this content go ahead and like subscribe and stay tuned to see what type of content I take on next. I will see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.